hey there, everyone. Welcome to Thursday. First things first, I'm Jenna Wolf. That is the Hall of Famer, Chris Carter. This is Nick Wright. How are we doing today, guys? Good morning. It's, we've got, it's definitely morning. We've got everything done but the ring ceremony, it would appear. Now, ye, ye with little faith. What is it, Owen 131 or something? Coming it's something back like that. I'll give deficit. you really good odds if you want to pick the Cavs to complete the comeback. I'll take that action. Okay, I I'll, will be the first person to do that on record. Right. I, I I'd say four to one's that. fair. Well, that's good news for a man who's got nothing but bad news. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> exactly right. All right, we will discuss. we got three hours to do it. But let's start the show with what happened last night. Game three of the NBA Finals. And oh, what a difference 24 hours makes when it comes to the NBA Finals and who will get MVP honors. Okay, and other things. Just 24 hours ago, Steph Curry had almost wrapped up the award, locked it up. Then Kevin Durant said, hold my beer. KD, 43 points, including a dagger three-point shot to give the Warriors a 3-0 series lead and almost certainly guarantee a third Warriors title in four years. Here is Kevin Durant on whether he thought he had to carry the load with his teammates struggling last night. I didn't think about it at all. Um, I just tried to play hard defense, try to rebound as uh, best as I could. And um, if my shots were there, I just take them patiently and um, with poise. And uh, you know, I found I found some good spots, and my teammates did a great job of setting screens for me, setting me up. You know, coach did a great job of calling plays for me, and I just try to come through and be aggressive just to do something. Defenses try to plan for him, but when you're six eleven, seven feet, and you're you know shooting a hezzy pull up on the left wing from twenty seven feet, that's pretty tough to guard. That was amazing what he did out there tonight. Uh, some of those shots, um, I don't think anybody in the world can can hit those but him. He was incredible. I think, CC Nick, besides LeBron James, no one has been more consistent throughout the playoffs and in the finals in a quiet consistency than Kevin Durant, who when he saw, not that he needed to, but when everyone else was struggling last night, he really stepped up. 43 points. How impressive was his performance last night? 43 points, Jenna, more importantly, on only 23 shots. Not even going to get into the rebounding, not even going to get into the defense um, from the beginning of the game. Sometime that he was pressuring LeBron in the backcourt, you know, he knew that that was going to be a challenge, even though they went through multiple switches. But, but Kevin Durant, this is, I mean, this is one of the greatest players in the world. Let's forget some of the other things. It's one of the greatest players in the world. It's a perfect situation for him. He is not a, a guy that wants necessarily the limelight or wants to be the leader, but he just wants to play basketball. He says it all the time, and that's what he's been able to do at Golden State. He doesn't have to worry about that. Steph, not playing well. Clay not playing well. Kevin Durant, on the world's biggest stage, Kevin Durant showed why he's the basketball player that he is. Second best in the world. And he doesn't have to play backseat to Steph Curry. He doesn't have to play backseat to Draymond Green. In his role within this organization, it fits his skill set. So not only can he be that good offensively, but his ability to make plays for his other teammates. He's got a high basketball IQ. Yeah. The totality of it was just too much for the Cavs. And it's not, it's not as if we didn't know this, but now that we've seen it, these are the pitchers, and Kevin Durant was a huge part. In yesterday's show, I thought that he was going to be a big part to what they were going to do in game number three proved to be true. I thought he would be have a more a significant performance than Steph Curry, and he led the way. Yeah. Jenna, you, you said in the great open that, you know, what a difference 24 hours makes. What a difference two and a half hours makes because in the pregame show, Right before tip-off, Jeff Van Gundy referred to Steph Curry as the Warriors' best player. Said, this is the type of thing you need from your best player. And that will probably be the last time Steph Curry gets called that as long as Kevin Durant's on this basketball team. Because Kevin Durant, yesterday, a guy who could stop playing basketball today and be one of the 25 greatest players in the history of this great game, will probably finish in the top 15, maybe higher, had the greatest game of his career last night. Let's not get it twisted what it was. It was his playoff career high. It was a game where his other MVP, the reason the Warriors are so unfair, is because it's KD and Steph. Steph was having one of the worst games of his career. Yes. Certainly his worst finals game. And he's had a few rough finals games over his four-year final run. And KD had an answer every single time time up to and including 
hitting a shot from further back but in the same area of the court that he won last year's finals with, winning this year's finals with. The left wing three-pointer. Last year was to turn a two-point deficit to a one-point lead. This year was to turn a three-point lead into an unable-to-overcome six-point lead. You, th listen, there is. I, we will spend the better part of three hours today talking about how brilliant he was. But when you have a player of this caliber who plays the best game of his career, three hours sometimes isn't enough. And there are guys who get out there and they look like they're trying very hard and they're successful. No one makes it look more effortless than Kevin Durant. There are shots mm -hmm. he takes and he's just no expression on his face. And CeCe, I've been fighting you on this the whole season that Kevin Durant needs to step up. He needs to be a leader. We need to see more from him. Why isn't he? And you kept saying this is not who the guy is. He just right. wants to go out and play basketball. And last night he did the thing that you say he is. He performed exactly the way he is. He didn't need the leadership or the limelight or the Ra Ra or any of it went out and scored an effortless 43 points. Right. I think the the steal shot of Kevin Durant after he makes the three, he takes like three steps, and then you see Draymond Green yapping, mm -hmm. and you see Steph Curry yapping, steps and a KD. front runner, and KD just just a, a, a steal. I mean, Stoic look. I, I mean, man, it was it was just. I, I don't know what it look it was, but I know to me that's going to be the look that I'm going to remember yes. from Kevin Durant. Now, there, you talked about LeBron being robbed of the iconic moment. Man, I, I don't know what's going to happen the rest of Kevin Durant's career, but that moment right there, that face, that look that he had yep. among all the chaos with all the pressure and how he steps through. There, and, there it is. Man, this is what he wants, man. Like, he wanted that moment. He comes and to the game. I watch the press conferences. Uh, uh, Nick, you, you and the staff kind of make fun. I, I watch what guys wear. Man, Kevin Durant wears the same thing almost. I know it's not the same thing, but a gray Nike sweatsuit. Every once in a while, I have on a Nike black hat. Man, he's not looks here like for a high school kid going to an AAU tournament. It, it, it looks, it, it, it's like a it's a it's a hooping uniform for when you're off the court. Yeah, I'm here to work exactly. And right. when I get done with that uniform, I'm gonna put the sweatsuit back on because that's what he's comfortable. That sweatsuit. That's what he's comfortable in, Jenna. He's comfortable playing on a team with a bunch of stars. That's the reason why he left OKC. Now, I'm going to tell you, it's LeBron James's fault. It's LeBron James's fault, the reason why KD's in Golden State. Because a couple years ago, if they don't come back from a 3-1 to one deficit... Oh, there's... The okay. butterfly effect of what losing that title allowed the Warriors to do. The butterfly effect of what the, the Thunder... Blowing the 3-1 lead, followed by the Warriors blowing the 3-1 lead. That allowed, it needed a perfect set of circumstances. We don't even have to get into the NBA Player Association not letting them smooth the cap and all these other things that allowed this to happen. But what it's allowed to happen is the greatest collection of talent in NBA history. And while it has made finals anticlimactic, while it's made a fact that in these last two years, LeBron has averaged 35, 11, and 10 in the finals, and he's now 1-7 in, in those finals as far as his, the individual games. It, the only reason that I can, to be totally honest, stomach any of it, because I enjoy the competition of it, I enjoy the finals to be competitive, is because we got a moment like this. If last night's game yeah, was someone this... someone won the game. It, right. If last night's game was this result, but it was because Steph went for 22, and Katie went for 24, and Clay went for 26, and it was just... They, that. Last, we got an iconic NBA moment last night. And how about this? I don't blame the Cavs for the, what their game plan was. The, if, there have been five times this year KD scored 40 points, playoffs or regular season. Last night was the first one the Warriors won. Like, they, mm. the idea of don't let Steph get off, right. don't let Clay get off. We don't really yes. have a great way to stop Kevin Durant anyway. But Dur what Durant did, I couldn't believe this stat. I read, I think it was Marcus Thompson tweeted it out. All year long, KD never made more than one 30-plus point three-pointer in a game, regular season or postseason. Never had a game where he had more than one of those. Last night, he had four of them, including the shot that is the yes. iconic shot we're talking about. He was unguardable last night. He was, it wouldn't have mattered. It didn't matter if LeBron was on him. It didn't matter who else, who was on him. He was unguardable last night. And I, I've poked fun at KD a bit for the quote he gave to Bill Simmons, which is, Listen, LeBron spends all his time in the gym working on his body. I work on my game. I want to be able to make shots from everywhere. And we saw some of the downside to that at the end of game one when JR bodies him for the rebound. Yes. Before JR, it's like, ah, maybe you should spend more time working on your body. I said that. Well, you saw the flip side to it last night. 
not a spot on the court that he can't make a shot from. And it's we've never seen someone his size be able to do that. The length he's listed is 6'9", dude 7'1", and it, with a super long arm. You watch him and you just say, if he's hitting shots, there's nothing you can do. It was the best game of his career last night. Kevin Durant goes for a playoff career-high 43 points as the Warriors win 110-102. They're now up three games to none. For the second straight year. In the best of seven. Coming up, let's talk about this from the other side. What went wrong for LeBron and the Cavs last night? Next on First Things First. At Buffalo Wild Wings, we'll admit that we often go overboard with our limited time offerings. We just can't help ourselves. Take our new signature sampler. For $15, you get wings and three shareable options, like fried pickles or cheese curds. Then there's our aptly named over-the-top nachos, a literal mountain of crispy tortilla chips loaded with your choice of pulled pork or honey barbecue chicken, corn, jalapenos, and more. Then top it all off with our new platinum margarita. Go overboard with us today at Buffalo Wild Wings. Wings, beer, sports. Available for a limited time while supplies last. Please drink responsibly. Back here on First Things First, we'll get to the Cavs' survival plan. But first, KD finding a cutting Iggy who takes one dribble before dunking on Tristan Thompson. Iggy made some nice passes in this game as well. He, the, the ball movement, even though he, he was refusing to shoot the basketball, the way he helps it move when he's out there, you saw the difference. <laughs> NBA players talk about his basketball IQ, and you could see the reason why they won him there in that tough spot. Questionable to even play game three. Play the game maybe of the series. Kevin Durant, the dagger three from way downtown like it was nothing. See, you described the look on his face as, as stoic. It almost looks like relief right there. I mean... Whatever it is, like, it's it's not your typical reaction. Right. He went through a couple different phases. The first one was, like, relief, and then afterward was, like, I mean, how... This is what I'm here for? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm, sign me up. Okay. Yeah. This is... What do you do when you have no one to pass the ball to? You pass it to yourself. Right, LeBron? I mean, doing this in the NBA Finals is just comedy. Yeah, that's... That KD decides to repeat what happened last year. LeBron decides to do the same thing. He did this last year yes. in the NBA Finals. Amazing play, amazing athlete, understanding where the ball is going to come off. Made it look easy. And the NBA counts that as a missed shot and a rebound. They got to adjust that. They got to adjust that. Well, you can't because you got to make it a legal play. Because you can't throw a pass to yourself. Well, so they, you got to give them a... That's fine. See? You still got to yeah, adjust that, it. Yeah, you like that? I like See, it. I got sports smarts. Sports that, smarts. Yeah, you can uh -huh. read a book and all that kind of stuff. But <laughs> all right, more on game three from last night. LeBron James held up his end of the proverbial bargain. 33 points and a triple-double. Only issue, Kevin Durant had 43 points, including that big-time three from deep to give the Warriors a win and a commanding 3-0 lead in this series. Here is LeBron on facing this juggernaut Warriors team. The margin of error is very low. I mean, you can't, you know, it's almost like, you know, playing the Patriots. You just can't have mistakes. They're not going to beat themselves, you know. So, um, you know, when you're able to either force a, a you know, a miscue on them, you have to be able to capitalize, and, and then you have to be so in tuned and, and, and razor sharp and focused every single possession. You can't have miscommunication. You can't have laws. You can't have my faults or my bads and things like that because they're going to make you pay. And when they make you pay, it's a 3-0 or 6-0 or 9-0 run, and, it's, you know, and it comes in bunches. So, you know, the, the, the room for error is just you just can't have it. You said something really key earlier. You felt good about, better about this game because it wasn't every guy on the Warriors hitting 20 to 30 shots. It was sort of a well-played game mm -hmm. up until the end. What, what did the Cavs do wrong? Why couldn't they pull this I mean, out? They, they, I would say there are two major keys. One is in the second half, outside of LeBron and Rodney Hood, the whole team was 4 of 19 from the field. Like, in the second half, Rodney Hood played well. LeBron was good. By his standards, probably a little worse than he would like. By anyone else's standards, very good. And no one else could hit a shot. But in the first half, and see, you and I were talking about this during the break. Like, we're all we're replaying the Kevin Durant three at the end of the game. Yes. The Kevin Durant three at the end of the first half. To cut yes. it from nine mm -hmm. to six. The Cavs who came out with the flurry. I talked yesterday ad nauseum. When the Cavs have beaten the Warriors over the last two years in Cleveland, they've punched them in the face in the first quarter. They did that. 
and left the first quarter with a one-point lead because they couldn't close the first or the second quarter, and in the second half, they couldn't hit shots. All that plus LeBron, by his standards, what was that, a B-level game? A 30-point triple-double, like, on just under 50% shooting? LeBron wasn't spectacular. He, wa he wasn't spectacular from the mid-range game, and he wasn't spectacular from the three-point Right. Line. So those are the things that LeBron, it's gotten to that, where he can get a 30-point triple-double, and we could be like, wow, we've seen him play so much better. I thought a lot of yesterday's offensive output was going to be predicated on how many jump shots could he hit. And you could see that he couldn't get his jump shot going, and he still was able to get 33 points. But the run at the, um, in the, at the last minute of the first quarter, to get Golden State within one shot, two mm -hmm. possessions of the Cavs, and the last minute right before halftime when the Cavs had all the momentum when the Warriors needed a shot, Kevin Durant or someone else made that shot. Another reason that they lost or what went wrong with the Cavs was you can't allow Jordan Bell to have 10 on the road. You can't 10 points. You can't allow ja JaVale McGee to have 10 points when Iguodala also is going to give you eight or ten and make some very, very heady basketball plays. So when you give away that type of productivity on the, these are the role players, on the road, right. and especially late in the game, the last thing, the problem for the Cavs, late in the game. LeBron plays the whole fourth quarter, 12 minutes, gets 12 points. The rest of the starters, they get two points. Kevin Love gets two, Tristan, zero, JR, zero, George Hill, zero. So even they're playing against an iconic team sure. that got an iconic performance from Kevin Durant, late in the game, if the starters that are LeBron and the others, mm -hmm. if they give him some help, they can still steal this win, uh, game number three in Cleveland. The other, uh, through, uh, through regulation of the first three games, the Cavs have scored 107-103-102. So, like, their offense, even though LeBron's not getting the help, LeBron's been good enough individually offensively that they have scored around enough points to win. But you've allowed in regulation 107, 122, 110. you got to hold this Warriors team under 105, period, point blank. Like, and, by the way, the one game that they've beaten the Warriors in the last two years in the finals, the defense didn't show up in that game either. That was the game where the Cavs had 86 points in the first half where they hit tw an M NBA Finals record 24 threes. Like, this, is, this was your thing about them all year long. When you were yes. saying that they they are not going to be able to flip a switch, and you were more skeptical about even in the Eastern Conference playoffs, but you LeBron said it. The, the, the point I, you've been making about the defense point I've been making, which is you have to play 46 minutes of connected defense, and the Cavs have trouble playing 26 minutes. You, how did Jordan Bell get his points? He's just wide open dunks. JaVale McGee, wide open dunks. They're not, they didn't communicate on switches. They gave those guys easy baskets. So the Warriors score 110 when Steph can't hit a shot and Clay can't hit a because shot. Because they focus so much on trying to stop KD and Steph. And they didn't spend so much time, obviously, adjusting defensively. But uh, how do you respond to, to LeBron coming out and trying really early on to get the other guys involved as opposed to saying, I got to do this. This is on me tonight. Let me get myself going first before everyone else. Did That's that... The, that is the typical LeBron game, and it worked well for them. The, these role players, JR got off to a great start. Mm -hmm. Man, Kevin Love, the energy plays that he was making, shot the ball well early. Like, we, you need those guys to play well early in the game to get their – LeBron – he can get going at any point in the game. So that was the right game plan, Jenna, to allow the role players. That's the reason why they had a small first quarter yep. lead. That's why they had a half time lead was because of the way that these role players got off and Ty Lue making the bench move as far as bringing Rodney Hood in. Those were all very, very good moves. But they ran into an iconic performance of Kevin Durant. But didn't we talk about how important it was for the Cavs, like you mentioned yesterday, to get out to a, a strong first quarter? The games they've won, they've and dominated the, the first quarter, and I wonder if maybe he should have done a little bit more in the first or come out a little hotter. I mean, hotter listen, in the first. I, I know we're going to do this to LeBron, that we're going to parse it. LeBron last night had his fifth career finals 30-point triple-double. No one else in the history of the league has more than one. In fact, the history of the league, not LeBron, has combined four. How many does 30 he point Michael Jordan? Have? How many He's got none. 
Oh. He's got Steph's got one, Magic's got one, uh, James Worthy has one, and there's one that I'm leaving and out. LeBron LeBron's has... got five. Like, well, there it is, Jerry West. Oh, Jerry West in game seven of a game he lost. That's the list, 30-point finals triple doubles. LeBron had one last night, and we are going to pick apart his game. The one three LeBron hit all night was to cut it from four to one inside of two minutes. Like, the... Yeah, it would have been nice if LeBron had 45, and they needed him to have 45, but we can't expect him to have 45 each night. Right. We talk about the iconic performance. We talk about the 43 Durant had, but Jenna, the other thing, LeBron in the first quarter, he got guys involved. Kevin Love had seven. I think JR had seven, but the theme of the game, Kevin Durant. Kevin Durant had 13 mm -hmm. in that first quarter to keep Golden State. He was the only Golden State Warrior that was playing well. So LeBron did the right thing, but Kevin Durant, he was the answer to all questions. Kevin Durant, big time for the Warriors last night. Steph Curry was not. Coming up, why is there so much less pressure on Steph than LeBron? That's next on First Things First. Time for some stories to start your morning. No? Also time for some free agency talk. Among Bless the many you. possible Dang. LeBron destinations, the Lakers. According to reports, LeBron and Paul George will discuss teaming up on the Lakers next season. What do you think, Chris? How good would that Lakers team be? I believe they got to add at least a couple other little role players, but they're young. They got some good prospects, good assets. Man, I'm, if, I don't believe San Antonio is as apt to trade Kawhi to the Lakers as they would trade him to the East if they were to trade him. But what about Kawhi, Paul George, LeBron? Well, Kawhi, Paul George, and LeBron would be Wait, that's not something. Even... That, well, that's, yeah, that's just that's Chris putting a little spin on it. And that, there's there there's some there's more than there's more than meets the eye there. Let me put it like that. Chris is not pulling that out of total thin air. Maybe a little thin air, but not total thin air. But here's the thing: when people say, oh, "Is LeBron and Paul George would that be enough?" Man, if LeBron plays at the level he played at this year. One other legitimate each and every night all-star would be far better than what he has in Cleveland. And what he's had in Cleveland has them to the NBA Finals and competitive in two of the three games. I don't think it's the best situation, but it wouldn't be a bad one. Instantly, they're better defensively. So oh, LeBron yeah. would have a chance. All right, moving on to another potential LeBron destination. According to reports, the Sixers believe that Brian Colangelo had no knowledge of the burner Twitter accounts. Colangelo has claimed he was, quote, fully unaware of these accounts. Nick, as hard as it is for me to believe, can Colangelo escape with his job? It, man, it seems like there's a possibility. Now, he and his father combined in the NBA, they're going on 60-plus years, zero titles in those 60-plus years, so they've got <laughs> some job security, unlike most NBA families. I Listen, I read the, I reread the Ringer story last night. People, again... He was called and asked about two of the accounts. They didn't mention three of the other ones. And then right when the phone call ended, yes. th those three that weren't mentioned, shut down. it was shut down or went uh. to private. I, <laughs> I don't understand how there's any deniability here, but I would have fired him six days ago. The fact that he still has a job to me means he might keep the job. Yeah, now, he might be able to keep his job, but that don't mean if I'm a player that I got to trust him. Because that trust was breached. With that intel, there's too many things that were actually true going through these accounts. Now, uh, just, just uh, I got common sense, all right? Don't try to pull that one over on me. And I do believe that who his father is will ultimately have an influence. It, it, I think it is right now. It's still having an Clearly, influence. Clearly, the Sixers want to try to find a way to keep him if they're going through all this. All right, back to last night's game. Rodney Hood had a solid night after being reinserted in Ty Lue's rotation. Perhaps should have done that a little sooner. Mm. He scored 15 points, six boards in the loss. Nick, how impressed were you? With Hood's performance? Listen, Hood was arguably the third best player on the Cavs last night, certainly their best bench player, and he gave him good minutes. I, I didn't blame Ty Lue for taking him out of the rotation. He was really, really bad against Indiana. But luckily for Rodney Hood, Jordan Clarkson was as bad as any player in playoff history has been with extended minutes. So that spot in the rotation opened up, and Hood made the most of it. Hood was really good for them last night. And the reason why on the second trade, why we thought – that the Cleveland would get better. They had Hood with the other pieces, gives them far more athleticism. He's got a great jumper. He can get his J. It was perfect for what the Cavs needed. I just wish 
that we have seen this for 30 games because I believe it with a playoff performance like last night if we had some time he could have gone for 25 or 30 last night but based on the limited role that he was going to play because he hadn't been playing he could only get 15 or 20 even though he played a spectacular game. All right, finally, Kevin Durant picked a perfect night to have sure. his playoff high. He scored 43 points, including a big three-point shot with less than a minute to go. Warriors now hold a 3-0 lead in the series. Chris, how impressive was KD's performance last night? It's, a, it's the most impressive performance I've seen him. And seeing he's been to three finals, his first one there with OKC. And to see where he was before the in the Western Conference final when they were up 3-1, and how his attitude now in these big moments, it's totally changed. So he went to the right place for his personality. Now he's got to be able to work out some other things, but it's time to recognize him for who he is. I mean, he's one of the best shores, scorers. He's a shot maker. And right now, at this point in his career, the situations aren't bigger than him. Anytime you can face LeBron James and be able to play the way that he's played, man, you got to give Kevin Durant credit. Man, he spent hundreds and thousands of hours in the gym working on his game so that last night that the world could see it. And as Nick said, man, he's got spots on the court, not three spots, not five spots. He's got ten spots on the court where he is totally, totally comfortable. And, and to me, Steph is dangerous because of the length for which he can shoot. But I would, I, would, I would much rather face Steph day-to-day -day than to face Kevin Durant day-to-day -day because his overall length, and he doesn't need a pick. He doesn't need to run off a screen. He can take you one-on-one. -on -one, he can take you off the bounce, and if you give it to him, he can just flat just shoot it. So he, the, the, the number of offensive uh, weapons that he has, I believe, is, is scarier than what Steph presents. If, if, if on this three-hour show today we spent all three hours talking about Kevin Durant, I'd be fine with it. I... This is the best game of the guy's career, okay? This is a guy, you guys know how irrationally much I care about NBA history. This is a guy who will end up in the Pantheon. This is a guy who already is one of the 25 greatest players ever. And we saw his greatest game of his career last night. His playoff career high. Another iconic shot from almost the identical spot on the court that he hit the one in game last, last year. year, except this one was five feet further mm -hmm. back. I... You mentioned scoring from anywhere on the court. I'm going to go a deep pull here for a moment. When KD's first couple years in the league, he reminded people of someone, a guy named Bernard King. So Bernard King played with the Knicks. Not He didn't look like Bernard King, but the, the reason he reminded him he could score from anywhere. Bernard King famously talked about how he only had five dribble moves. He had a dribble move if you were guarding him close right, far right, straight up, close left, far left. And he would pick 17 spots on the court. He would only practice from those 17 spots. So for him, it was all a math equation. Which of my one dribble moves do I need? Which of my one of five? To get to Which one of, of my spots. one of 17 spots? So he said, Bernard King said, look at my highlights. 95% of my points came from I can draw them for you on the court. Katie's, you know what Katie's spots are? Every inch inside 35 feet. There is not, he doesn't have a spot he needs to get to. He will see where the defense is guarding him and say, mm -hmm. whatever spot is easiest to get to, I will go get there. And he, he's played in 13 career finals games. He scored 25 points at least in all 13 career finals games. He's been great, man. There's three levels of scoring the basketball. That's at the rim, in the paint. There's intermediate, which being the jump shot, and beyond the three-point arc. And he is great at all three. Now, there is no one else in the NBA that can say they're great at all three. He's the only player. The, he's, the only, he's the only player that can say he's great at all three. And last night, he was the only player that was great for the Warriors. While KD was having his monster game, things weren't going quite as well for all his other teammates. Steph Curry, for example, was not so good, only scoring 11 points. He only hit one three-pointer. Despite his struggles, Golden State has now all but wrapped this up with a three games to none lead in this series. Here's LeBron on the challenges of playing the Warriors. That's why they, they you know, retooled this team, um, went out and got KD um, to where there's really not much pressure on, you know, I want to say any of them to score, but if one of them have a bad game, then they got three or four guys that can actually pick up, you know, the load. CC, so what do you think? Is, is LeBron right that, that there's not much pressure on any one Golden State Warrior? Well, I'm not going to hold him to every word much because there's pressure when you're that talented regardless. Now, 
I can I can argue that sometimes when you play with talented players mentally it's more challenging but there are times where you get breathers Steph there's no way he has that type of game and he's happy at the end of it unless KD has that iconic moment so I understand what Le LeBron I is saying after being very very successful for a long time in the NFL Dennis Green went out and got me Randy Moss and it alleviated a lot of pressure day to day for me to be spectacular. Okay. You know, so yeah. I didn't have to worry as yeah. much. Now, I worried about my own game. I put the same amount of energy, the same amount of practice, but it wasn't a death sentence if I didn't play well. So the game, it was a it was more joyful to play well, and I tell you this all the time of 16 years playing those four years I played with Randy were my most enjoyable years not only did we win more but because that burden was lifted having him there yes yes it is he's true LeBron it's right the, the, the there is a special type of pressure that you could argue when you have other great players you don't want to let them down that you want to meet their level I understand that but for the most basic level of pressure it is how much of my team's ability to win lies on my shoulders and my shoulders alone and that is what the Warriors have hacked that's what the Warriors have solved Steph Curry would be the best player on every team in the NBA except for the two teams playing in this series. So 28 teams, if Steph went to that team, he'd be their best player. He was 1 for 14 last night with four minutes left in this basketball game, and his team was ahead. That, mm. that, that's impossible. That, there, 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 it mm -hmm. isn't, there is not another team that could have a guy that good be that bad. He was having a historically bad finals game. First time in, what, 21 finals games he didn't hit multiple threes. Well, first mm -hmm. time. First time. He, he was 0 for 9 from 3. He was approaching the John Starks 0 for 11. He had, the, he had Van Gundy and, and Jackson talking about what's the worst finals games anyone has ever had. That was the discussion. For yes. a guy who came into the game, as I'll mention it again, in the pregame show, he was called the Warriors' best player. Yep. He was the overwhelming Vegas. He went into the game, according to Vegas, 10 times more likely to win finals MVP than Kevin Durant. He has the worst, forget finals game, playoff game of his career. And they win anyway. If yes. you go into it, think about the opposite of that. LeBron has... The fifth 30 point triple double of his career, only the ninth in NBA history. It's only been done nine times. He's done it five, four guys done it once. And what's the narrative around him this morning? Didn't do enough. LeBron goes mm. 33, 10, 11. Didn't do enough. Yep, didn't make enough jumps. Steph made one three at the end of the game, made one big play for them to put him up four. And that was enough. That's the difference. Just a quick question about Steph and what happened last night. He just doesn't play well on the road or hasn't been. As a professional athlete, what's the mindset when there's nothing, he's not hurt, there's no pressure on you to have to carry, there's no, you don't have to win, it's not a must-win game, but to come out and be so cold, seemingly, and just not able to really get anything going. Well, Jen, the only way to describe it is because there is more pressure playing on the road. Steph has not performed under those moments great. Like, he, he, he hasn't. There is no, there's no technique. There's no reason from a strategy standpoint. Right. Uh, he's missing the same shots that he was making when they're at home. Steph, and that's why people like to say that he's a front runner, that when they have the lead or when they're playing at home, like, he's out there shimmying, doing all types of things like this. But, but you talk about what a luxury. The game Steph Curry had last night where he has 11 points, I want you to guess when the last time LeBron won a game where he scored 11 point his team. Oh, I mean, it can't be in the. It's not this run in Cleveland. No. Maybe not. So early in Miami. No, no. Let's go December 5th, 2008, against the Pacers. <laughs> wow. December 5th, 2008. LeBron scores 11 points and he won a game. That's the same thing that Steph Curry does. In the final, Jenny, you bring up a great point, great stat there. 20 and 21 finals game. This is, the, this is the only game that he didn't hit multiple threes and still is not the butt or still not part of the criticism. Right. That's the luxury that Steph and the Warriors I, have. I talked yesterday about how Clay has the luxury of 
getting paid like a superstar because he is, and we never talk about no Clay's pressure. legacy. Yeah. That, that Clay, when he plays great, it's a bonus. Yep. When he doesn't play great, no one's like, how does this affect Clay Thompson's legacy? Steph does have a legacy to discuss. KD does, LeBron does. But here's the here's the luxury of the Warriors. Th this game last night is reminiscent of what LeBron did in 2011 against the Mavericks. Now, Steph didn't look scared the way LeBron did in that series. But statistically speaking, it's reminiscent of one of those Maverick games. We, we've talked about that, that series, those games, for seven years. Yes. Why? Right. Because when LeBron had that game, his team lost. And if last night, mm. if, if last night, if you don't have Kevin Durant, if you forget if he's not there, just put a real put DeMar DeRozan in that spot, right? Who's a top 15 player, top 20 player in this league? And he has 30, right? You lose. And everyone this morning's killing Steph. The, the luxury of being able to go into a game saying, if I like, yes, I'd like to win finals MVP. Yes, I'd like to be great, but I don't have to be. Conversely, LeBron has had a seven and eleven point game they won. LeBron had a 51-point game. His team lost. Like, that's when LeBron is saying going into a game and not having the pressure that it's all on you, that's what he's talking about. Steph Curry, 1 for 10 from 3, 11 points in last night's win over the Cavs. All right, coming up, will Friday's Game 4 be LeBron's last in Cleveland as a Cav? And someone from our staff will be at that game. That's next on First Things First. Here at First Things First, let's go over LeBron James' to-do list during these NBA Finals, shall we? Play 46 minutes a game? Check. Score more than 37 points a game? Check. W win, win any games? Uh, hold, hold on, we, have, we haven't done that yet. Wow. LeBron, shade. Shade, shade on the Kang. LeBron currently staring at the brink of losing his sixth NBA Finals and perhaps playing his last game as a Cav in Cleveland. Chris Carter, any chance LeBron James stays in Cleveland with the Cavs on the verge of being swept? No. No, I mean, why would he stay? I mean, the chance that – LeBron, I told Nick before this season started, and we'll just – we might always be on different sides of this, but uh, I might be persuaded. But, but LeBron can't afford no more loss in the finals. Like, LeBron needs some wins. And, and now this one right here, three and five now, this would be three and six. Like, no, he don't need to stay there because – how much better is he going to get as a basketball player? Because they can't get better. They got the what, eight, ninth pick? Eighth, eighth pick. pick. Eighth pick. And their like, older guys are locked up. Uh, yes, and they're an older roster. The style doesn't work. This is a super team that they're going against. Now, in the normal circumstances, if Kevin Durant was in OKC and Golden State was themselves as they exist, yeah, Cleveland would be in the running. But let's not – the talent – the, re the existing non-relationship that he's got with the owner, a working relationship, right, Nick, mm -hmm. you would call it. And I want to win more championships. Like, yes, these are the things for LeBron. So, no, that he, he can't do that in Cleveland. He's done more than enough for any one player being from the state of Ohio coming back and providing that one championship that they did uh, two seasons ago. But, no, I don't see him staying there. There are better options for him for his basketball career. Because this is what this is about. This is about basketball. And I believe that, man, he's got to leave. He can't stay there any longer. Dan Wetzel of Yahoo Sports wrote an article late, late last night talking about the history of Cleveland sports. There's the fumble. There's the drive. There's Jose Mesa. And then he added a new one, the incompetence. And he's talking about having LeBron on your roster for 11 years. For nine of those 11 years, he's the best player in the sport. And you get one title out of it. Miami had him for four, got two out of it. Mm. The, the, the absolute inability the first time around to surround him with any all-star caliber players. Yes. And the absolute inability the second time around to retain your GM and then retain your all-world point guard that will now end up with him leaving twice. It's... That's one Dan Gilbert has to own right on his chest because Dan Gilbert got a reprieve because he was lucky that he owned the team that not only won the lottery, he wasn't the owner when they won the lottery, but won, won the lottery that got LeBron and most lucky that he owns the team closest to Akron so LeBron came back and now he's going to lose him again. Nick, how important personally just from LeBron, LeBron's camp, losing David Griffin what, what did that do for them in the, the domino effect? I think it was a, it was 
doubly, it was, it was doubly bad. Here's why. One, they thought it was a betrayal because LeBron signs a multi-year deal for the first time after they win the championship. So this past offseason was the first one that LeBron couldn't threaten to leave. And this is the offseason that the owner, once again, is too cheap to retain his GM. Since Dan Gilbert has owned this basketball team, every GM he's ever hired has been there for either shorter than his first contract or just his first contract. He's never, never extended a GM. He's never gotten to a second contract. LeBron won a championship with David Griffin, trusted David Griffin. They, can't, they don't bring him back, even though David Griffin wants to come back. And LeBron's people believe, so therefore I think LeBron believes, I haven't spoken to LeBron about this specifically, but that, that if David Griffin's there, Kyrie's still there. And if Kyrie's still there, they think all of this is different and that they are more competitive and that they maybe may, that maybe they're the ones up 2-1 in these NBA finals as great as Golden State is. And so w will LeBron leave? Absolutely. Does he have a perfect place to go? No. There is no there. I said I've been saying this for two months. The only team that fit wise you're like that is perfect is Portland. Like, but he's not going to Portland. They don't have the cap space for it. Like, mm. they, they have the roster. You're like, oh, two great shooters. You can play. Like, mm -hmm. th that one works. But the – so Philly is an option. Houston is an option. L.A. is an option. None of them are – I'm sure LeBron, to be totally honest with you, would like to stay in Cleveland one more year. See – what the Lakers do. See what happens with Kawhi. See if a better fit opens up. But I would argue the Cavs and Dan Gilbert have forced his hand to where he can't stay in Cleveland another year, not if he wants to compete for a title. But unlike last time, he has this beautiful luxury of being able to choose any team without anyone having any issues. Everyone seemingly knows he's leaving. There's no... I don't think Cleveland fans are expecting him to stay, whether they want him to or not. He can pick wherever he wants to go. We've got multiple teams on the table. There are reports that he's meeting with multiple teams. And he can choose where he thinks he wants to spend probably the last four or five years of his career, which is a luxury he didn't have the first time he left Cleveland. Well, there was a, several things he didn't have. You make great points. Um, there were several things he didn't have. He didn't have experience. He didn't have the backlash of making the decision. So how much smarter he got after that, he didn't. He wasn't a champion. He wasn't a champion. I mean, he was considered to be a traitor. Mm -hmm. Born in Ohio, drafted in Ohio, going to bring a championship to Ohio. So when he left, and I'm going to tell you what LeBron don't have, and this is the most precious thing you got. That's age and time and youth. He was 25 then, Jenna. Now, he wasn't a champion, but at 33, this is the last move on the chessboard. Like, if this don't put him in checkmate, if this don't get him to be the GOAT, then point. there are no moves after this. Which is why, which is, again, LeBron knew when he was trying to get them to keep Kyrie that Kyrie's contract expires after next year. He also knew that, those, that the folks in Cleveland believe, and if you look at any of the advanced numbers, that Cavs team in last year's NBA playoffs was one of the greatest offenses ever. It took Kevin Durant playing at a level he's honestly playing, played, the highest level he's played over the course of a series in his career. Now, last night was the best game of his career. It took a perfect storm for the Warriors to win the series as quickly as they did. They liked the idea of running it back, maybe running, having another year next year, and then make that final decision. If Kyrie Irving's still on this team, they, it is not a foregone conclusion LeBron's leaving. LeBron wanted them to keep Kyrie. David Griffin has now gone on the record in the last month or so saying, yeah, I think if I were there... I could have found a way to maybe smooth this over. None of that happened, and now LeBron's got to go. I want the movie to come out just so I could see how it ends so I know, and then I could talk about it the next day on the air, and then I'll know more than other people. Well, hey, coming up. If we stay on the air, we'll be talking about it. It'll be Kenyon like, Martin we're making a movie. tells us what went wrong for the Cavs last night. Hear from him next on First Things First. Welcome back in to First Things First. We're now joined by former NBA All-Star Kenyon Martin. What up, What's up, Kenyon? Martin. Good to see you, sir. Kenyon, it's all but over. Or no? Maybe? Huh? Ain't no maybe in this. Uh -huh. <laughs> this thing is a foregone conclusion. Oh, boy. <laughs> all right, so 24 hours ago, Kenyon Martin, Steph Curry was well on his way towards wrapping up his first finals MVP award, and he would have if this was a best of three and the finals ended after game two. But it's not. And so he didn't. And in game three last night, Steph struggled. And Kevin Durant did not. And man, did he not. 43 points, including a dagger three-point shot. 
to help seal the win. Kenyon, I'll start with you. How masterful was Kevin Durant's 43-point night in Game 3 last night? It was laughable. <laughs> um, just how easy it came. Made it look easy, right? Yeah, yeah. He had an automatic. Um, just the carryover from Game 2. Uh, he didn't miss a beat. Um, he figured out, um, I think, at the end of the Houston series what he wasn't doing, and he was letting them force him into shots. This game two, game three, he lets, I'm getting to my spot, and stop it if you can. And he's proven that no matter who they got over there, they can't do nothing with him. And one of the things that's different, like NBA players have spots. You, you talked about the legendary Bernard King in his book, how he wrote about the spots he was trying to get to. Yeah. You've defended players. You know, part of the game plan is, listen, he likes to be here. He yeah. likes to be here. But we've never seen a player that has so many spots on the court and at seven feet. Man, if they bring him, if they bring him above the three-point line and hand him the basketball, we've never seen any type of weapon like that in basketball. Oh yeah, nah, he is he is a special special guy. Like none before, none to come that I've seen that can do that and put the ball in the basket at that rate, that size, skill set, handle the ball. Um, he's a matchup nightmare for for most guards in this league, most most bigs. Well, he's a matchup nightmare for anybody Definitely. because the guards aren't tall enough and the bigs aren't fast enough. Yeah, so the, what this, do you do? I mean, and you mentioned he, that he can get every spot is his spot, but last night, what, what made last night's game so special was he expanded his range unlike any time he's done all year. I'm going to bring this up again. He didn't have a single game mm -hmm. all year where he hit more than one shot from 30 plus feet. Okay. He hit four of them last night, including the dagger to win the game. And so, like, the, the, there's, we, we've always known he's a matchup nightmare. We've always mm -hmm. known he's a great mid range shooter. When he's hitting from Steph and Lillard range, then there's, then there truly is nothing you can do. You know why he didn't score 50 last night? Because the game wasn't long enough. Like, he was going <laughs> to keep scoring as long as that game was going. He wasn't getting tired. He was, he was still, he let him in rebounding. He was, this was the be, the all around, the single best game I believe Kevin Durant's ever had. I know he scored 50 once this year. I know he's had huge games before. It, all things considered, I believe this is the best game Durant's ever played. I agree with you. Uh, I've seen a lot of him. Um, we're in the same conference for years. Yeah. We matched up a lot with him. You had him. to guard watch, him a lot. Watch tape. Yeah. Spent a lot of time guarding him. Um, try to be physical with him as you can, but that doesn't work. Uh, he just uses what he does well. Um, it, get to his spots, like you said. Um, the, um, the statement that you made earlier that he made about LeBron works on his body and he works on his game, mm -hmm. that, that's the best statement I've heard <laughs> in a yeah, long no. time. No, because you can tell. You can tell, like, that's what he does. Like, I'm going to go in this gym, I'm going to go in this, I'm going to get in this lab, and I'm going to work on every spot on this court where there will be no deficiencies, where you can't force me to do something that I, I'm not comfortable doing or I don't want to do, you know? You made a, 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 when we first came out, you said, I, how, how did he do? And you said, well, it was laughable. Yeah. He just he, he made it look easy. Because you, you expect, and you played against him, you expect a guy like this to knock him down and get himself jacked up and pumped up and fired up and rally the team and, like, get the guys going and scream and yell. It's not who he is off the court, and it's not who he is on the court. It's a guy who we hear what you just said. He just wants to practice playing basketball, doesn't want to worry about anything else, and that lends itself towards the performance we saw last night. You can tell that he's on a mission, and he's been on a mission for a couple years now to prove to people that he should be mentioned in the likes with LeBron James and the best in his league, the Kobe Bryant's, and just retired. You know what I'm saying? But he's... Man, he, it was awesome. I, I don't yes. know. I, I, I'm sitting there watching it and I'm laughing. Like when he like when he pulled up from 33, I'm sitting there like nobody mm -hmm. in the whole gym thought he was gonna shoot that but him. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. He knew like whatever however they play this, I'm firing it. Yeah. And man, like it was easy, man. I and hey. I, I, off to him. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> I, I, I'm yeah, a yeah. fan. I'm a I'm a fan of people who can score the basketball. Yeah. And we haven't seen a, a player like him. But the thing that's very, you know interesting about the whole thing is you used to guard this guy how much better has he gotten mentally and physically because the physical part is used to be something that you could that, that was part of the game plan to take to him when you saw him last night compared to when he was a kid what is the difference that we're watching as fans that he's he's on attack he's never playing on his heels now you know what I'm saying before you can climb into him and he'll probably get a little more timid because mm -hmm. he wasn't comfortable in that role. 
But now you look at last night on the free throw line, just the physical part of it. He's boxing out Tristan Thompson on the free throw line last night. I'm saying, yeah, keep like fighting him, keeping him off the glass. Well, a lot of guys wouldn't want that action, and when you that guy, you know, but he's not backing down from that, which is, says a lot to me that he's engaged in all aspects. And like I said, well, well like when I would guard him, like I said, I, all, all I would try to do is get into him, be physical, force him to do things, push him around, hit him, do stuff like that. But now none of that bothers him because he's so locked in at what he's trying to accomplish, and that's when championships, and you can tell. Well, and Jenna, you keep pointing out kind of his demeanor, and there's a level to where his demeanor's working in his favor, and that is an even-keeled demeanor. He's, mm -hmm. We were talking about this before the show. He doesn't seem to get too low, and he doesn't seem to get too high. That's why, after he hits that shot, Draymond's quote after the game was, I was cursing him out, and I realized I needed to chill. Steph's yeah. screaming. KD is right here. KD, like, he is... Sometimes it seems it almost... It almost seems like you're not engaged yeah. when in reality he's I don't want to say he's on autopilot because he's not but he is not allowing he's not allowing the results to dictate how he feels about how he played. Yeah. It's a very he seems to be a very process oriented guy. If I make the right choices, if I make the right play, I will to quote LeBron live with the result. Yeah. And he is and he's staying totally even killed throughout. And I mean in the last two games he's 25 of 37. In the last two games, he scored 69 points on 37 shots. That's comedy, man. Like I, the, the, I mean, yes. that, the, the the efficiency is something that in today's NBA we value a lot more than we used to. Yeah. Like we, we, the volume scores are out of vogue. Efficient scores are in vogue. Katie's shooting 56 percent these finals. Steph's shooting 39 percent. Like, I, Steph went into that game yesterday, everyone forgot that through three quarters of game two, KD was far better because Steph had the amazing fourth quarter. And then KD reminded everyone how much better he's been this series last night. So we spent all day yesterday and the day before talking about how Steph had the NBA Finals Award just locked up, mm -hmm. MVP award locked up. How quickly has that now shifted? A day. I mean, it's 40, Kevin Durant. 48 minutes of NBA game. Yeah. That quickly. Um, KD hadn't played bad in the first two games. No. Steph it's just, just Steph had that great fourth quarter. He had that quarter. great fourth quarter because that was the most recent thing that we remembered. But and storylines. Yeah, yeah storylines. But KD just came out and reminded the world, and this is what I do in these moments. And I'm up against the arguably the best player in the NBA right now, and I'm going to show y'all my worth against that guy. And that's what he's doing. And at the backdrop of Clay doing nothing, and Steph doing nothing because even when when Steph went off in the fourth quarter with the five threes, uh, which the historic performance of nine threes in game number two, man, the other guys were playing good though. Yes. So now you're talking about it was a little more desperation. It was far more clutch. I mean, what KD moment. did. Yes. Because Steph yeah. was, ter was yeah, terrible yeah. for the game. And nobody because else was, Right. Well, and so he. he KD still had the benefit last night that even though Steph was bad, they were afraid to leave him, yeah. so he wasn't getting double teamed. But he couldn't – this wasn't a game where, yeah, KD scores 43, but they also look at what everyone else did. Yeah. This was KD's game. Yeah. This was I, – the I, I, I'll say it all day. This is a guy who is going to finish – as one of the 15, if not one of the 10 greatest players in the history of this game. Yeah. He's been in the league 11 years. This is the best game he's ever played. This is his career high in the playoffs. This yeah. is the best game he's ever played. And another note, what I saw something from KD last night. When he was on the bench and Steph was out there, he was trying to get Steph going. Mm -hmm. It was during the free throw. He came mm -hmm. up with Steph, gave him dap. Mm -hmm. Listen, come on, I need you. you know what the, so that says that, he, that he's in the moment. He understands that he needs a little more help. But if you're not going to give it to me, then I'm going to take this thing upon myself like I've been doing this game, and I'm going to lead us to victory. There was a really cool moment at the end of the first half after KD hit that three, which was a huge three. They're yeah. being down nine and being down six at halftime, especially when the Warriors know they're getting the ball to start the third quarter. They almost always score on that play because it's a Steve Kerr basically drawn-up play. KD hits that three. Steph greets him. They're walking. Steph's yelling, and KD's clearly mouths to Steph, I got you. Yeah. I got you. Like, Steph was playing poorly in the game. Definitely. Katie, I think at halftime, had 24, mm -hmm. and he said, I got you, yeah. and he lived up to it the rest of the night. Steph Curry, not so great. Kevin Durant, fantastic. 43 points and only one fake Twitter account. That's awesome. Oh, oh wow. Ke I got to bring it in Today's a not the day for that. Oh, no, I just sneak it in. Oh, I took it out goodness. of all my other stories. Love and it was Katie. probably way more than one. Canyon, we'll see you a little bit later in the show. Nick, thank you always no for problem. the line right before the coffee drink. And you guys at home, has this been the best finals of LeBron's career? Next on First Things First. Get to the side.
76ers. I'm going to the game for a family reunion. <laughs> Oh it's in Russia, see. Oh, <laughs> man, my we'll people ain't going to be, we ain't gonna be over there. Stras it's cold, Stras right? Stras yes. Stras <laughs> Stras we'll get to the 76ers in a minute. But first, Kevin Durant finding a cutting. Andre Iguodala was questionable. He made the start. Nice dunk over Tristan Thompson last night. Iggy, his stat line was not impressive. Solid. But if you watched the game, you saw his impact. Moving the basketball, he was solid defensively. He had the second best plus minus on the team. What do you do when you got no one to pass the ball to? Yourself. Look at that. You only LeBron see this James. in the finals. Is this why we need LeBron in the finals? Because he only does this in the finals. I know. Last oh, year's finals did the same shot, thing. shot, and then what is it? Miss well, th well, that's not a. I mean, it's, it goes in the stat sheet as a missed shot, but he's throwing it to himself. Like, yeah. th it was planned, but he Nick did wants last that off the stat sheet where it shouldn't be a field goal attempt. I, this should be the one play in which you get an assist to yourself. If you know they're going to finish like that. Absolutely. We'll call right. it to LeBron. All right, Absolutely. the play of the game, maybe of the series, Kevin Durant, dagger three. From downtown, Bombs. and bonus is his facial expression. Watch it closely. Psh, ain't no thing. Like I expected it. That's what that facial expression says. Nobody else expected him to take that All shot. the special players have special moments. This right here will be Kevin Durant's moment for now. It'll be hard to top this moment as we go through the rest of his basketball career. Time for in or out. You want to play? Yeah. Let's play. We're sticking with Durant. He dropped a career playoff high 43 points last night with Steph Curry going only 3 of 16 from the field. The finals MVP race has now shifted a bit and tightened. CC, you in or out on Durant passing Curry last night for finals MVP? Absolutely. Last night with Durant got 13 points in the first quarter, him and Curry got to even. The rest of it... It's a, it's a tale in all in itself. <laughs> yes, I'm in. Kevin Durant will be the MVP 2018 final. The Golden State Warriors have 10 players shooting 50% or better in these NBA finals. Steph Curry is not one of them, and at the current moment, he's not even shooting 40%. Wow. Meanwhile, KD's leading them in points, leading them in rebounds. He's averaging seven assists. I mean, he's shooting 56% from the field, 47% from three. It would be shocking. A crime. Oh, but the be... narrative, Nick, the, the narrative. Well, listen, it, 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 all Steph needed to do was play. If Steph had a 25-point game and KD still did what he did, Steph would be the leading contender. You can't start off one for 14. You can't start off one for 14 mm -hmm. and win finals MVP. Steph's performance cost him last night. All right, LeBron James finished with his first triple-double of the finals, going 33-10-11. and 11. The Kang now averaging over 37 points per game in the series to go along with nine boards and 10 and a half assists. Nick Wright, you in or out on this being LeBron's best career NBA Finals? Oh, I'm out. And, I mean, that's a testament mm -hmm. to LeBron's greatness that 38, 9, and 11 wouldn't be his best NBA Finals. But I watched him put together the greatest three-game stretch in the history of the sport two years ago against 73-win team to culminate his greatest NBA Finals in 2016. So I'm out on this. Uh, I got to be out. I'm, even, I'm not even going to take that year. I'm going to take last year's Finals. Oh, okay. So if I couldn't take that one, then I'd take last year. This year has been great, but but it speaks to the consistency. So, no, I'm out. All right, moving on. With the Warriors' win last night and a commanding 3-0 lead, a sweep is perhaps in the cards. The last team to get swept in the finals was LeBron's 2007 Cavs. CC, you in or out on the Warriors sweeping the Cavs on Friday? I'm out. I'm out. I believe the Cavs can get one. Yeah, I believe I believe they can get one. I believe the Cavs get it get, get it done. Yes. Okay. Uh, Good I'm for out. you, uh, see. Uh, 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 I, 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 you, you know, I I, 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 feel like I do you, this now. I feel like you hold on. I do this. You're, you're, I, I take you're talking it through. I take edit, editorial control because uh -huh. I told the people this morning in the meeting, ah, you know they're gonna sweep them. But listen, I'm willing. It's not a t it's not a technical error. All right. <laughs> I apologize to my staff. I'm in. They they, they corrected yeah. it on the fly. Yeah, I'm in. Uh, you, I feel like you're <laughs> doing this out. for me. I, listen, Cece's, uh, it doesn't know. She <laughs> doesn't know. <laughs> I'm, I do know. I do know. She doesn't know. He I did know. Knows. But then my he staff is better than me. Yeah. Yeah. Then they changed the graphic, and then I was hit up. Cece, oh. listen, yeah. don't worry about I'm it, man. Out. You know who's going to win the finals. It wasn't oh, four yeah. or five games. All right. My answer is that it was not late last night. I said Warriors and five at the beginning of the series. <laughs> I'm going to stick with Warriors and five from now. Now, there's only one path for the Cavs to get there at this point. That is winning on Friday. I, I don't think they're going to get swept. I, I, the Cavs could have, should have won Game One. They were in Game Three. Are they going to, are they going to show up in Game Four? Last year they did. Last year they were down 3-0. Mm -hmm. They played outstanding in they Game did. Four. So I'm out. So on just so I'm clear, you're both out. 
Yeah, yes. Kind of. Kind of. Yeah. Sort of maybe and out. Yeah. Whatever, CC. Anything you want. <laughs> with the finals pretty much wrapped up, focus has now turned to where LeBron will land next season. With the Sixers supporting GM Brian Colangelo's Twitter debacle, many have now thrown Philly's name back into the ring. Nick, you went out on LeBron going to the Sixers if Colangelo stays. I do not think that he's going to make this decision based on their general manager. So I'm I'm in on this. I think mm. LeBron's going to make it based on what's the best teammates, best chance to win titles, best situation. I think they raise their chances if they get rid of him. Particularly, if they get rid of him and hire David Griffin. But I'm in. I think Philly's the best place for LeBron, no matter who the GM is. I'm out. I think Philly's a good spot for him, but I believe he's going to go west, and people assume that maybe it's Houston. But I'm going to go with either he's going to L.A., but my dark horse, San Antonio. He always wanted to play for a great coach, uh, all right? So that would check one of the boxes. For Becky Hammond, yeah, man, right? for, yeah. for playing with Becky, <laughs> right. yes, the, the assistant. She and might she, be the coach after Pop. But I know. Yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah, she's she's right might, they might, uh, she did get a good interview in Detroit, too. So I'm out. San Antonio dark horse, though. Okay. Becky, hey. Hey, what's up? Shout out. Uh, before the final started, Nick Wright circled Friday's Game 4 as a must-attend. So Nick got tickets to Game 4, and he's must-attending. He's flying there after the uh -huh. show, but that was all planned Something. before the... Before the Cavs went got down to the Golden though, bro. State. So you see you went around on Nick still going to Game 4 in Cleveland. You got real legs. Nick, what about the tats, bro? I know. That's not, hey, I got some I got some arms on you. I mean. Whoever whoever did that, that's very, very creative. Yeah, okay. I mean, no, get LeBron down. off the ground. Are you are you in or out on <laughs> yeah, me still going, see? No, I'm in, bro. I'm in. Of course. And you got to support it, bro. That's your guy. Well, and this is, here's the thing. Here's the way I look at it. Because I'm in. I'm definitely still going. Yeah. Contrary if the Cavs would have last night, Jenna, I would have been in. I'm Duh. taking Danielle's spot. <laughs> right. Yeah. Okay. The, the CC says to my wife last night, keep in mind, I invited CC to go with me a week ago. He's like, ah, I'm not sure. So I buy my wife a tip plane ticket. He CC says to me, he's like, just so you know, if the Cavs win tonight, I'll go, I'll go <laughs> in your place. Thanks. Here's the thing. Here's why this is a great game to go to no matter what. If they lose, it's LeBron's last game ever as a Cav. Whoa. If they win, but they lose, fr they lose in game five, it's his last game ever in Cleveland as a Cav. If neither of those things happen, if he plays another game in Cleveland as a Cav, then I was there to see part of the comeback. If you win game four, win. So either win, way, win for Nick. Win, win. So I'm going. Listen, I'm in. If there is a game six, Nick, I'm going to tell you right now, I'm going to treat you. Mm -hmm. Tickets, airfare, all that. If there's a game six, Nick. All right. Yes. All right. All right, we in there. I got you. We in there. The That's only a week thing, from today. The only today. thing not on the table was Nick and I going no, to the game no, together. No, Just only because you probably you got a better I don't chance have Paul Wade in, so George I did. Hill spot, Jenna. That is so rude. There's no coffee in that mug, and I do not like the thought of not being able to spend a whole weekend with you, Nick. I think they said you got a break. Nick, you and me, baby. <laughs> Makes him so uncomfortable. No, yeah. Coming up, could LeBron be joining the Warriors in the offseason? That's next on First Things First. We're going viral. Throwback Thursday edition. LeBron James stayed true to his game, finished with his first triple-double of the finals in last night's loss. Here's a clip going around the web this week of a 16-year-old LeBron James on what playing his game really means. I mean, they say I'm the best player in the country, and I wanted to keep it that way for the next two years. I just wanted to play my game. My game is to I can score, but I can pass to and I can rebound. I can do so many things that can help my team win, and that's what I did. I never considered that, you know, um, it wasn't even the thought. You know, you really can't even do that. I, I don't want to go through that. I want to graduate with my class. I, I got three best friends, uh, Drew, Willie, and Sheon. And um, high school, you can't come back to. And um, you know, prom, you can't come back to. I talked to um, Tracy McGrady when I was in New Jersey, and he just told me a lot of things that just inspired me. Like, when you get out on the court, you got no friends. And you know, um, I, when I get out on the court, you know, um, sometimes I underestimate who I'm playing against because they might be on the same level as me. But he told me that it don't matter who you're playing, you just gotta kill them. And you know, um, that's what I'm coming into the year next year with. And you know, um, whoever we play, I'm coming out to get them. I wonder where Willie and Shawana are right now. They're like, well, probably like, you know, 
They won state titles together, man. Mm -hmm. that, that, awesome. No, he's kept his crew. Yeah. Those Back close in to the him, day? those who have grown up with him, absolutely. That's awesome. And that's one of the things um, admirable about LeBron and some of the things that they're doing, very, very creatively. As you can see, as a young athlete on a different level, as far as his focus, determination. Oh, so focused. And Nick, what about that hair? The hair. That's what I was gonna <laughs> yeah. say. LeBron, LeBron doesn't miss the, that that physique, that diction. Those earrings, but I know he misses that hair. Yeah. LeBron would give up a max contract if he could still grow that hair. <laughs> There's no doubt about it. But he's been in the public eye. I mean, he's 16. He's 33 now. So over half his life, he's had that level of scrutiny on him and delivered. But that's the, I, I had never seen that until this moment. I, I missed it on Twitter this week. I obviously didn't see it 17 years ago. I'd never seen that until right now. That was cool. All right. Time for some stories to start your morning this morning. Also time for some free agency talk. Among the many possible LeBron destinations, the Lakers. According to reports, LeBron and Paul George will discuss teaming up on the Lakers next season. See, how good would that Lakers team be? Man, the Lakers, they got some talent. After watching LeBron and what he can do against Golden State, like, the Lakers are far more athletic than the Cavs. Now, they could use a couple shooters, but I don't believe that that's the final move. It would, that would be the start to the puzzle, but you need a couple other pieces, you know, because the Lakers are still very young. You got to probably get rid of Lopez as the center there. But I believe other players would want to go to the Lakers if LeBron was there. The, I think the Lakers, as far as basketball reasons, of the three most likely destinations, Philly, Houston, and Los Angeles, the Lakers have the least going for them, even if they add Paul George. It would be, mm -hmm. uh, Houston's obviously more ready. And I the believe, other teams are better basketball I, teams. I, and I believe Philly would be as well, with mm -hmm. a year older Embiid and Simmons. I'm not crossing the Lakers off the list at all. He owns homes there. There's a lot of non-basketball reasons, but I don't think that's the best basketball fit for him. All right, moving on. Andre Iguodala made his 2018 finals debut last night after missing six games with a bone bruise. Iggy finished with eight points, and Steve Kerr said, quote, he's one of the smartest players in the league. Nick, how much did Iguodala's return helped the Golden State Warriors. I, listen, the, the guys who had been filling in for him had been playing so well and continued mm -hmm. last night. I mean, I know Sean Livingston finally missed one shot, but he's still shooting 90-some percent for the series. But Iggy's smarts were on full display. He didn't show up in the box score. Hockey assists, his ability to keep the ball moving. We know this Warriors team is basically unbeatable when they have 27-plus assists, which they did last night. Iggy was a big part of that. He had a huge steal on Kevin Love on a post-up late in the game game mm -hmm. two where the at that time the Cavs needed a bucket and they didn't even get a shot attempt so a lot of the intangibles when you have a guy like Iggy on your basketball team all right moving on Rodney Hood had a solid night after being reinserted in Ty Lue's rotation perhaps should have done a little sooner he scored <laughs> 15 and six boards in the loss Nick, how impressed were you with what Hood did last night? Listen, he was third best player on the team last night. He, in the second half, was the only Cav other than LeBron that was a plus offensively. But people should remember, first playoff game this year, Rodney Hood started for this team. Forget yes. being in the rotation. He was so bad in the Pacers series, Ty Lue had to move him out of the rotation. Now, could he have gone to him sooner? Should Jordan Clarkson have been well out of the rotation well sooner? Yes, I do believe that's the case. But he went to him here in Hood. Hood paid him back with the delivering the performance. And also, there's probably not a player on either one of these rosters that's been through the emotion that he has gone through. Started the series against the Pacers as a starter. Ended up being benched in that series. Played awful just the year of his contract. His wife has a set of twins mm -hmm. um, during that first uh, during that first playoff the series. Yeah. So I'm glad to see him get these great results. This is hard to do. Coming into the finals and to be able to put that type of scoring effort together when the Cavs needed it, even though they did come up short, very impressive what he did. All right, Steph Curry was the front runner for finals MVP heading into game three, but his stock took a major hit last night when he went just three of 16 from the field, missing his first nine three-point attempts. And he finished with only 11 points. So, Nick, what went so wrong for Steph last night in Cleveland? The Cavs, to the detriment of the rest of their defense, did a great job staying attached to Steph. There mm -hmm. were some open threes, but not many. Like, they were so focused on Steph, they were giving up cuts to the basket. They were so focused on Steph, they didn't double-team Kevin Durant one time because mm -hmm. when you have Steph and Clay both on the court, who the hell are you send in on the double? Like, when you send a big man on the double, you can get you guys are going to get shots at the rim. But this is an enormous missed opportunity for Steph Curry. I, I, the, I've 
tried very intently to sp spend the majority of today's show talking about how great Kevin Durant was, because that is the story. But a secondary story is the missed opportunity for Steph Curry. KD's already got a finals MVP. Steph doesn't. Even with two regular season MVPs, because that's really special back-to-back, -back, mm -hmm. also unanimous. Yep. All right? So those things are huge pluses from a player's. LeBron's never had a unanimous. Nobody but, in the but, league history. But, but you're saying the ultimate credibility comes with being the finals MVP. Why? Why is it so important because to have a finals it, MVP? Because it's who was the best player on the best team, at least for that series, and usually it's the same guy as was for the year. And that's what hasn't happened with Steph. Like, people, let me bring up Kobe for a second. People bring up Kobe's five rings all the time. To me, the most impressive part of Kobe's career are those last two when he was the man and he won finals MVP both of those years. Mm -hmm. Those first three, Kobe was a huge part of it, but Shaq was the leading force, right? Yes. So the first Warriors title, Steph was the MVP of the league that year. Doesn't win finals MVP. Last and year. And also that it was Iguodala. It was Iguodala. It was, you it was you know, because I, I think that kind of throws some salt on the wound of Seth also, right? Absolutely. Of course. The next year, the, he's the unanimous league MVP. They lose after being up 3-1 in the finals, and he's not great down the stretch. Last year, he was the best player on the Warriors last year. Kevin Durant last year got injured and missed some time. Mm -hmm. Steph was their leading force. And in the finals, Steph was really good in last year's finals. But KD was transcendent. And so through two games, because he had the, mir not miraculous, but the amazing fourth quarter in game two, he was, according to Vegas, ten times more likely than Kevin Durant to win finals MVP. And we wake up this morning... And he's coming off one of the worst, if not the worst, playoff game of his career. And you don't have a lot of these opportunities. Like, things mm. things change. I know everyone says the Warriors are going to win five of these. They might. KD also could leave. He's a free agent. I'm not saying he will. He could leave. Steph could get hurt. We don't, we don't. And also, you might not have the same stage, even though it's NBA Finals, because if you don't have LeBron there. Right. Say, for instance, if they, if they were playing the Celtics. Which it's, it, it's a right? different feel. Okay. It's a different feel. Dude, you guys don't feel bad for him. Like, all he has to do is play his game, and he could win It's it. not about sympathy. Well, no, I don't. No, 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 no. I'm sorry, Jenna. I want to make this part clear. I don't think. I think the only way Steph can win finals MVP at this point no, no, is I if meant the to... Cavs win games. Correct. Starting... Like, if this thing ends Friday, I don't think Steph can win. I think KD has too much of a lead with only one game to go. But no, you're, you mean that he could have, he controlled Yeah, this. like, he can, this is, it's up to him. He controls this. You saw what he did having one good quarter. He strings a couple of those together. This whole narrative could have been different. But this is the thing. KD gets 13 in the first quarter. See, I believe at that point KD pulled even. Now how's it going to end? KD pulled away. I mean, they needed every bucket. They needed every rebound. The critical, I mean, with Steph and Clay, 11 and 10 points, and KD getting 43. Yeah. Like this, I mean, this is no contest. The fight's over. And all championships are not created equal, which is why we, we care more about LeBron's one in Cleveland than his two in Miami, which is like it. Mm -hmm. And people are going to judge these last two Warriors titles differently than the first. Because yes. they added Kevin Durant. Because it seemed you have like to. it was easy. And so if you're not going to – people aren't going to wave around Steph Curry's championship totals the way they do with Kobe, the way they do with or against LeBron. If you have no finals MVPs and you're this good, that's – when we're when, – some guys don't care about this. I do care about this. When we're talking about all-time player rankings, where could Steph Curry become the second greatest point guard in the history of this great game? Behind only Magic Johnson. Could he pass Oscar Robertson? How far away is he from those types of things? Finals MVPs matter. What is and it? he had a golden opportunity. Before last we move on real quick, what does it mean? It means that you're a clutch player? It means that you can do it when it really counts? When the pressure's on? When Steph you're playing against the best player in the league? Is that, what it, is that what the finals MVP means? It means, you were, it means for a two-week stretch, you were the best player on the biggest stage. And he's never won that award. Uh, 18 hours ago, I was certain he was going to win one. Now I'm certain he's not. That's how much things changed in the two and a half hours last night's game. I wonder where we're going to be at the end of the show. <laughs> That's going to be crazy. <laughs> hey, you guys know the expression, if you can't beat him, join him, like what Kevin Durant did two years ago? Do you also know the expression, too much of a good thing is a bad thing, like what LeBron James could do very soon? According to reports, LeBron will meet with the Warriors this summer. Warriors. He is one loss away from losing to Golden State. State in the finals three of the last four years CC would go into the Warriors hurt 
LeBron's legacy. Uh, not for, let's wait on whether it would hurt the NBA. Would it hurt LeBron's legacy? Yeah, I mean, LeBron is a double standard, a triple standard for every decision that he makes. Like, I mean, why would we want that? Like, I, I, I'm a fan of LeBron. I've been a fan. I, I, I saw that video. I, I, I've been tracking LeBron for a, a long, long time. Why would I want his basketball career when he is the greatest player? I expect him to go somewhere that is challenging. Everywhere he's been, man, it's been a challenge. Like, it wasn't easy in Miami. It was hard leaving Cleveland. It was even harder coming back. So everywhere he's been challenged. So, no, I don't want to see. And it would hurt his legacy. People would, man, they would, oh, man, people it would should. talk about LeBron. It, it, it just, it would not look good for him. The, all right? It just wouldn't look good for him. KD, I accept it. I'm willing to accept it in free agency. I'm willing to accept it. With LeBron James, no, the, I wouldn't accept it. Yeah, and you should. It, the, here's the thing. I, I know that people love to make the argument. It's a very new age argument that pro athletics are just like regular jobs. And what do you do in your life? Why can't pro athletes do it? Because they're not regular jobs. <laughs> so, period, point blank. They, they are... They are jobs based on the concept of the entertainment industry. Why do we find it entertaining? Yes, some of it is the artistry, the balletic nature of the game, seeing guys at the highest level. Well, the other part is competition. It, it, yeah. We like to go into a game and not know who's going to win. We like to go into a game and say, best man out there, go get it. And the reason people didn't like KD going there was because they were good enough already. And KD was such a good player and is such a good player, it made it feel unfair. If LeBron goes there, if LeBron even, I'll be honest, entertains going there, it undercuts the credibility of the sport. The only question would be, could they go 82 and all? That would be the only interesting thing, was could they go undefeated? And that might be intriguing for half a year until they lose a game, and then what are we out here for? No, I, you... You can't simply do, and I would argue this, LeBron has a responsibility to the league and to the sport of basketball. To if anyone is saying this in his ear, hey man, they're saying you can't be Jordan because you don't have six rings, just go go to Golden State, no one be able to say anything else, or you're going to have all the records. LeBron has, I believe, a responsibility to say, miss me with that. It's an, th 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 it would undercut what the league's about. So you said he can't even entertain the thought of going. Does... does Meeting with the Warriors fold itself into that? Is that the same thing as entertaining? I mean, why, why would he want to go meet with the Warriors? Then? This is the thing. You, you got to handle all business. You got to look at every angle. Why would you deny yourself a conversation? What's that going to cost you? Because this, this is a, a lot of business tentacles on it that's beyond basketball. This is the decision. I tell you, this is the last move on the chessboard for LeBron. So he should, just like KD, Talk to Boston. Talk to some other teams that probably was, I don't know what the chance of him going there, but you should have a conversation. These people that own these teams are very, very successful, not only at basketball, but in other things. And I think LeBron is bigger than basketball, so he should sit down and have a business conversation because this is beyond basketball in his career. If he wants to take the meeting, like just similar with one of the things the Celtics did was they laid out for Kevin Durant, the Celtics and the Heat, by the way, how we guard you. And so he didn't sign with them, but now he has that information when he plays them. They, 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 they laid out things for him that he took with him to Golden State. They said, hey, here's what Oklahoma City, they did it as an anti-Oklahoma City pitch, essentially. Like, here's what Oklahoma City hasn't figured out. This is how we guard you. This is what we would do for you, right? The, the, th that happened in those meetings. So I you want to meet with the team, that's fine. But this can't be on the board. There are, much like Kevin Durant, Kevin Durant, in my opinion, had 29 teams he could go to and wouldn't have been criticized or would have been only very lightly criticized for. LeBron James has 29 teams he can go to, and given how good the Warriors are, even if he goes to Houston, people would be like, I get it. What if Kevin Durant so had gone to Cleveland? Cleveland had just won, okay? You said 29 teams. There's 30 teams. Okay. Let's just say he joins LeBron. Tw All right, you know what? You're right. Cleveland, I wasn't, you're right. 28 teams Kevin Durant could have gone to and not been criticized like this. I still think even going to Cleveland wouldn't have been the level of criticism as Golden State, but sure. But, the, but there is, and see, you mentioned it. Even if people... The thing I, that he would have in that decision was Cleveland didn't beat him. Yes. You know, he lost. 
He lost. Golden State, Cleveland came and trumped them. And the, the, there, also, there is something to, forget the Durant part of it, going to the team that beat you. It's why I've always rejected this idea of, oh, well, LeBron went to Miami. Miami wouldn't, Miami wouldn't beat in Cleveland. <laughs> it would have been like LeBron going to Boston. Boston. Mm -hmm. Boston was beating him over the head for years, and then if he joins up with them. If, if LeBron can't get past Golden State, and his answer is, I'll join Golden State, it, I don't know, there's a bigger LeBron James fan on television than me. That would... That, that would change a lot of things about the league and about how he's perceived. Quickly, before we go to break, how is LeBron going to Houston any different with those two superstars? Houston ain't got no championships. Is Houston. that all it is? And they the got titles? no playoff pedigree. The okay. coach has not won. Harden has not won. So Chris just... Paul is injured, has not won. So LeBron's the only winner. Absolutely, and it would still be getting over Golden State. And right. if LeBron goes to Golden State, Golden State has the three best players in the sport. It's like Duke's recruiting class this year. They have the number one, number two, number three recruits. Yeah. They would have the three best players in the sport. You it's can't like our show, it. Jenna. Three yeah. best people in sports TV. Oh, wow. I like it. That's very, one, very two, nice to see. Funniest? You guess best number one? Best dress? Of course. Most athletic? Well, two out of three. Coming up, it's Kevin Durant staking his claim as the NBA's best player. Yeah. Kenya Martin joins us to discuss next. On best stats. Best. Back here in First Things First, we're joined again by former NBA All Star Kenyon Martin. As we continue to discuss the Warriors' dominance over the Cleveland Cavaliers, as much as it pains me, because I know you are such a big Cavs fan, but they're <laughs> right? there. It's life. It's life. As CeCe would say, yeah? I don't play for them. Just watch the game. <laughs> watch the Analyze it. <laughs> I didn't lose. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> I mean, I might have lost a little bit of money last night. I was night, just going to say. But that happens almost no matter yeah, what. I told who's you playing take the first quarter and half time. <laughs> uh, oh, oh. Oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Back to KD and his monster three of the finals. Just to recap, Kevin Durant had 43 points. He had 13 boards. He had seven assists. He still only has one Twitter account. He also <laughs> he also hit the biggest shot of the game. Eerily reminiscent of the biggest shot of Game 3 of the finals he took last year, too. Golden State has now all but wrapped this up with a three games to none lead in this series. Here's LeBron James on the challenges of playing against Kevin Durant. You guys asked me this last year. What was the difference between the Warriors the previous year and this year? What, I, what was my answer? All right. There it is. You know, Kevin Durant was my answer. You know, he's one of the best players that <clears throat> I've ever played against, that this league has ever seen. His ability to handle the ball, shoot the ball, you know, make plays at his length, at his size, at his speed. So, um, there it is. All right, Kenyon, how much has Kevin Durant closed the gap between he and LeBron James? LeBron is still the best player in the NBA. Like, I don't think that's, like, in question. Right. Um, Kevin Durant is probably the best scorer in the NBA. Uh, it comes as easy as anybody that I've seen in a long time, but LeBron is still the best player in the NBA, hands down. Um, history, his legacy, and things that he's done this year um, solidified that even more, taking this team to the finals. Um, so LeBron is still the best player in the NBA, but Kevin Durant is, um, like I said, he is by far the best scorer in the NBA. Um, he does it easily, doesn't need 16, 17 dribbles to get it off. Like most of these scores in the NBA, mm -hmm. I'm saying they need multiple, multiple dribbles. He does it in one, two dribbles. Yeah. Three, four dribbles max. Right. You know, so that that to me makes him a much harder guard than guys who take multiple dribbles in each possession. Right. Yeah. And, 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 and I, bl I believe the day um, should be a day of appreciation. And, man, I've been a fan of the NBA and basketball for a long time. Like I said, I was a big fan of you. When you got the University of Cincinnati, the influence of my family on the game of basketball, like we should appreciate the great basketball players that we have now because they really are special and they will leave a mark on the history of basketball when they're done playing. So we should appreciate, but they're all very different. Steph is very different and we should be able to appreciate his ball handling, his shot making like we've never seen. He's the best shooter that we've seen in the history of of the game, but he's just not that. He finishes in the lane. He's got far more creative at the hoop. Second best player, Kevin Durant. One of the best scorers that we've seen at that length, the way he handles the ball, and it's underestimated how quick he is for a seven footer. Can score anywhere on the court. There's not a spot that he's not comfortable, and there's no defender that gives him problems. 
Like, typically, with even the great scorers that we see in the league, man, there's defenders. Even Kobe would tell you, man, there's guys that gave me problems. There's no one. If you ask Kevin Durant, Kevin Durant sit down there and interview, like, there's no one that gives him problem. And LeBron James, what he does. We've learned this through our coach, Coach Mangini. He said, man, a quarterback in the NFL, I want him to be a force multiplier. That's who Tom Brady is. That's who Aaron Rodgers is. They play with talent, not the way of Ben Roethlisberger and some of these other quarterbacks we see. They make the talent around them better. LeBron James is that force multiplier that we see. And we shouldn't have to sit here and pick apart Kevin Durant and his game because it's really, really special. But LeBron James is better because he makes – the sec your second best player, your third best player, your fourth best player, a lot better than what they would be if they played with any other players. So that's the difference between the world's number one right now, who arguably could be the greatest basketball player that we're seeing. So Kevin Durant, we can say, yeah, he's the second best player, but he's also a top 10 the best player maybe in the history of the NBA when that, he's done playing. That's the thing that's unfair about all this for KD is there are a lot of giant stretches of NBA history where KD would be the best player in the league. Yeah. He just, his biggest crime, similar he to, similar to with Barkley's LeBron. with Jordan, similar to basically all the guys born in Kareem's era that played, that were in their prime in the 70s. <laughs> his biggest crime is, man, I'm only four years younger than LeBron. <laughs> birthday. Like his birthday. Yes. Because the, the, there, was a, there was a stretch. If, if Kevin Durant was... 10 years older than he is, right? And he was, and he came into the league in 96. And from 98 to 05, it would have, we would have said Shaq had a run, KD's prime had a run, mm -hmm. Duncan's prime had a run. Like, you, KD, I believe, is going to end his career favorably compared to Kobe Bryant. I think that's, I think wherever you think Kobe is, the seventh, eighth, ninth greatest player ever, that's the, that's the echelon KD's going to end up in. He should be, by the way, the best player in the league right now. The problem is LeBron, not only is he not trailed off, he somehow is having statistically his greatest playoff run ever. Like, logically, you would say, okay, KD in year 11, LeBron in year 15, especially when you saw LeBron in year 12, his first year back in Cleveland, he looked like a lesser player than his time in Miami. LeBron's just taking it to a whole nother level, and he's not dropping off at all. He became, last year he was the first player ever to average a triple-double in the finals. He did on 54% shooting. That LeBron. He's going to do it again this year. Right now he's averaging in the finals 37, 9, and 11. So if he has a 13-rebound game on Friday, he will average a triple-double again in these NBA finals. Like, so it, it is not an indictment on Kevin Durant that the gap is still there because he is one of the 15 greatest players ever. Definitely. No, you, I think you hit the nail right on the head. It's like the comparison is not fair. I'm saying because, like you said, Kevin Durant is special in his own way. LeBron is special in his own way, which we all appreciate the greatness that they do for our league. And I'm I'm just a fan right now watching these guys and um, apply with their skill set to this league, man. And it's great to watch. And, Jenna, one thing it does, it makes these next three to four years, while LeBron is playing, how important is how long does LeBron stay in his prime? And also over these next three to four years, how many championships does KD get? Because I believe also if he's able to put together – three and four years, or maybe they win three or four in a row. I think that would change some of the narrative, too. How many can he win right. while LeBron is still it, playing? It's Definitely. also, it also, and I want to ask your opinion on this, because very interesting quote from Kevin Durant yesterday, or at least it came out yesterday, I read it yesterday, when he was asked about his free agency this offseason. He was like, are you going to be back to Golden State? And he said, yeah, yeah, I plan to be. But I know crazy things happen in the offseason. And it seemed to leave the door slightly ajar. Yeah. If Kevin Durant was doing this on OKC, I think people are having a real discussion. Is he better than LeBron? If he was doing this for Washington, I think there are a lot. I think the only reason that I think most people are going to dismiss yeah. this well, you is because even in a game like last night, when Steph didn't play well, when Clay didn't play well, we still say, and I think rightfully so, well, it's easier for him. You can't double him. We can't double other guys. Yeah. You're not asking. And, and people. And so if if Kevin Durant while LeBron's still in his prime, so in the next couple of years, if Kevin Durant goes to a different team and does this, then we have that. Then this discussion becomes something totally different. But we're not seeing that right Why'd now. Why'd you roll your eyes? No, it's just like you can double him when you can't double him. It don't matter. Like the same thing with LeBron. If you choose to double him, if you choose not to double him, if they own, they own. 
You know what I'm saying? There's nothing that you can and do. And because KD is a playmaker. Like, no matter what and you can see that last what night. Team, when no he matter had what to. situation, yeah. no matter where it is, he's special, man. Like, so for me, it's like, whether it's OKC, whether it's Golden State, like, I was the big, big time. Like, I, I was on him for leaving. Mm -hmm. I was like, I was one of the guys who, like, I don't understand, I don't get it. But now seeing him there last year and then this year as well, like, I said it last year, like, he didn't go there to take a back seat which a lot of people thought he was going to go join Steph. Mm -hmm. Like, no, he went there to exert his dominance and let y'all know, like, I'm going to a mm -hmm. better team than I left, but I'm going to prove to y'all that I'm still the best player on that team. No matter what the situation is, no matter who you put on the team with Kevin Durant, he, he's going to rise right. to the top because that's right. who he is as a basketball player and as a, a talent. No matter what the situation is, man, and, and he's proven that, again, to me, like, <laughs> I'm the man on this team. No matter what Steph, two-time MVP, mm -hmm. no matter what other guys do, this is my team, and I'm going to prove to y'all this is what I do. Right. I lead. I, I'm a leader, and I do it by example, and he's doing that. All right, Kenyon, stick around a little bit. we got so much more to talk about. Coming up, will Friday's Game 4 be LeBron's last in Cleveland as a member of the Cavaliers? We'll talk about that and more next on First Things First. Back here with Kenyon Martin, it's time for Say What? Draymond Green, this was so cute. He's been getting attention for his pregame fashion choices, and according to him, some of his outfits might not even make it out of the closet. Say what? Finally, Draymond, you had all seven outfits picked out from your stylist, right? What happens with the other three? He lied to y'all. I ain't saw game six or seven outfit yet. Um, they still got that. I got game five outfit, though. It's pretty dope. I really don't want to wear it, though. Steph's like, you got to be kidding me. What that, up, C? That Draymond, he always keep a comment going, but watch the video again, watch closely. Draymond, too. Even during the game, press conference and everything. I don't know what he did as a kid, but he always got his mouth open. Open. Like, yeah. well, he got, what, did he he's suck his thumb? He's a mouth breather. He's a mouth breather. I think he sucked his thumb as a kid. <laughs> yeah. He's a Wait, mouth breather. I have a thumb breather for sucker. One. Don't yeah. do that. That's the worst thing. Listen, to be on the basketball court with somebody that does that, is the worst thing. Wait, why? Just they breathing on you. Listen, close your mouth, man. <laughs> <laughs> like the kid he used to play for Sacramento, Thompson, he had it bad. Like Jason Thompson, <laughs> oh bad, man. Listen, close. Listen, man. Hey, man, one the free. Listen, man, close your mouth, man. <laughs> listen, stop breathing on me, man. Matter of fact, Yo. right now, wherever Jason Thompson is, his mouth open. Definitely, yeah. right now hey, as we you, speak. On this you know note, can I ask you a question yeah. real quick? Are you a little jealous that the NBA players now can go to the game wearing whatever they want? When you were playing, David Stern had this very totalitarian dress code. You got to wear this. Now KD wears sweats. I think this you probably wrote a couple checks to him, though. I know, not me. I never, I, not, not from, not what I was wasn't wearing? supposed to wear. Like the first few years, then um, the dress code thing didn't apply, mm -hmm. and then they implemented the dress. I ain't got no problem putting on clothes. Man. Oh. I spent good money, money on, on over a lot of money over years on clothes <laughs> okay and you look good i'm saying i gave away a lot got to change the style <laughs> man sending clothes to different people man yeah. but <laughs> I, I try to tell keep Nick it that. up i'm trying to keep it young. up man he's young in this no, mm -hmm. in the haberdasher thing but we're fly guy <laughs> fly guy though thank you kenyon appreciate it's good that foot love too way out of that conversation. Yeah. Sticking with the finals. Yeah. Hold that win there, Daniel. <laughs> Let's go over LeBron James' to-do list during these NBA finals, shall we? Play 46 minutes a game? Check. Score more than 37 points a game? Check. Win any games? Yeah, not so much. LeBron currently staring at the brink of losing his sixth NBA finals. Kenyon, any chance LeBron James stays in Cleveland with the Cavs on the verge of being swept? Any shot whatsoever if they get swept? That he stays in Cleveland. Before the finals, I was saying yes. Like, really? why? Yeah, why, like, why leave? You got everything laid out for you. Um, they bring anybody, they do anything you th th that you ask of ownership, you know, management to do. But just looking at the way the guy's not engaged on the road and looking at the way the finals are, I, mm. I, I, I think he's gone. And just listening at his statements at the, um, the Boston series game seven, um, he was distancing himself from the team. Like they was asking about how was he going to how was the team going to approach Game Seven and and everything. That his answer was, well, I know the way I'm gonna approach it. I know the way I'm gonna be. I know how I've approached Game Seven before. And then the statement he made the other day about how much more picking up the teammates do you want me to do? Those signs to me let me know that he's 
he's 75 per 25 checked out. I'm saying he knows he has to show up in order to lead those guys so for his legacy. But I think he's out of there. Um, where he goes, we shall see. I don't, I don't like the Lakers thing. I don't like the Philly thing. I, I just don't like those destinations because what do you like? of other reasons. For me, I think basketball-wise, him and Paul George team up and become a New York Knicks. Whoa, whoa, really? Why the Knicks? They have money to pay him. Okay. It's the Garden. He th thrives on playing in New York in City. The Every, East. I think you like staying in the East. East. Greatest okay. show on earth. Greatest, like, why not play in the Garden? You, you love coming here. The people in New York would love you if you just made the playoffs around this thing. Right. You know what I'm saying? Not alone competing for an NBA championship. You bring him, Paul Porzingis, few pieces, shooters. Got the, I'm saying, high draft pick this year. Like, I think they can... Do something. Okay, guys. Let, let me tell you Take something. It away. Yeah. If this how I'm getting ready to go on record. Yeah. I'm getting ready to spend a lot of money on this. Yes. Because, okay? Yes. Because Let's go. if you're the only person ever said that, Okay, first, I'm going to the general manager, Scott Perry. Yeah. I'm sure he would take that deal. I'm sure Fizdale, Fizz. the head coach, would take well, that the Fizz deal. Fizz thing's interesting, too, because he, he played for Fizz this in Miami. Guy. But I'm speaking for Eric Shanks, all the people at FS1. Yeah. If LeBron goes to... The Knicks, we're signing you to a contract, okay? Because yeah. Nick Wright gonna pay for it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'll take that. I'll take that. yeah, I thought you were gonna talk about getting courtside seats because that seems some of uh, Chris Carter gonna spend some of that money from the late '90s he's been holding on to pay for some courtside seats for his partners here. However, I want to talk about where, wherever LeBron goes, yeah. why he's leaving. Yeah. And the reason he's leaving is because what more do you want him to do? Yeah. Like, the, in these finals, like you mentioned, Jenna, 37, 9, and 11. They're down 0-3. This is, I read this this morning. Dave McMenamin wrote it. I couldn't believe it. I had Dusty and Deontay, our real stats guy and our part-time stats guy, double-check this. LeBron has 10 consecutive finals games of 25, 8, and 8. 10 consecutive. Why does that matter? Show everyone what the record is for the entire world of consecutive finals games with 25, 8, and 8. LeBron's done it 10 times in a row. No one else has ever done it twice in a row. So think about that. 25, 8, and 8 in 10 straight finals games. That dates back to game 6 of 2016. The, the game 6 and 7, then all of last year. And in those, in the last 8 of those games, they're 1 and 7. What, show, show everyone what LeBron's averages are in the finals since the Warriors got Kevin Durant. Because it'd be one thing if LeBron was like, man, if I played better, we could compete with these guys. Oh, he's averaging in these NBA finals the last two years, 35, 11, and 10. 55% shooting. They've won once. They won once. That's why he can't say that. That's why he yeah, has to leave. I'm with you, but like, if he was to get somebody to come talk to some guys to come to Cleveland, maybe. But... It's, I think it's a foregone conclusion, man. It's just, it's too much. It, like, it's, it's, it's stressful mentally, physically, emotionally. He also doesn't get along like, with the owner. Yeah, that's, that's part of it. But he doesn't have to because he doesn't have to see him every day. Right. Like, if he didn't get along with Ty Lue, that would be one thing because he's there every day. You got to see him every day, interact with him every day. You don't got to see the owner. You know what I'm saying? Uh, but, yeah, but, that's it's, a, but it's there. On, on it's the, there, so why not remove yeah, that stress surface, level? On the when you're young, yeah. that's not important. Yeah. But when you are an empire like LeBron James is going to be, and you can pick and choose the people you want to work with. Yeah, definitely. Because does the owner actually have LeBron's best long-term interest? No, because no. he would have kept the general manager. I'm with you. No, he wouldn't have traded Kyrie. There ain't no way you let go of Kyrie because you know if you let go of Kyrie, how are you going to hold on to LeBron James? And if James? you do trade Kyrie, you don't trade him for the package that includes some future pick. No, you, you do trade some... him for the best right now package. LeBron wanted Paul George. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, he didn't care who, the Kevin Love or whatever they had to do. He wanted to play with Paul George. They're not going to be able to do that. So, to follow up on your point and a point that you made, LeBron's leaving because he He's exhausted. Yeah. All right? He you. is exhausted. You cannot play that high level of basketball under the duress that he has played with. It's like swimming the English Channel, and I want you to do it all under the water. <laughs> okay? The luxury that Steph Curry has. The stu the step the, yeah, the Steph Curry, <laughs> I mean, the luxury that Kevin Durant has, LeBron James at this point in his career deserves that to finish it out. This is the last move on the chessboard. And he's just trying to come up and take a breath.
and he deserves that. I would love to see him go to San Antonio and to watch him age like Tim Duncan, watch him play in the low post, watch him play the uh, the point guard in pops off of the offense, how they move the ball, him and Kawhi, and playing under the great coach that he wants. That's one of the things that he wants. Now, he might want to be in L.A. for a number of reasons, but he wants a great coach and San Antonio is the only organization that provides that. I do not want to see him in a Lakers jersey. I just think that's disgusting. Well, and why do you think it's disgusting? Tell <laughs> just, us I don't think like L.A. needs him or he needs L.A. I, and it stunts the growth of the guys that they then spent these high draft picks on. And you and you'll be in the same boat in three years that you was when Kobe retired. Well, You've been the same boat. The, the other honest? thing, I'm glad you mentioned Kobe, and I'll be very quick here. The yeah. other thing with L.A. is, L.A. will never love him the way they love Kobe. Yeah, so I like, just, that is that. No, 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 yeah, you're that, right. Yeah. Yeah. They will never, in fact, Lakers even, fans they won't like love him, LeBron even because they won't, he's past Even Kobe. they won't love him the way they love Shaq. 